Women and children of all ages, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. So as you guys, let me zoom out. So as you guys may remember in the last video, actually two videos, past two videos, we took out the old hacked up harness that I hacked up. I ordered a 2016 STI harness, I put that in the car. Come to find out, that harness doesn't work for this car. So apparently, Subaru made all of the chassis harnesses a little bit different. So 2015 and 2016 are same same. 2017 uses its own harness, and then 2018 plus uses its own harness as well. So the 2016 one that I have in there now, won't work. Wish I would have known that like before I bought and everything, but that's totally my fault. Now you guys know, if you ever have to swap a chassis harness, 2015, 2016, same, same, 2017 different, 2018 plus different. So I need to get this harness out of the car again. I've already found a used 2017 STI harness. I was gonna buy one brand new from Subaru, but come to find out Subaru actually doesn't sell the harnesses, so you can't buy them. So luckily I was able to find one on eBay that we snagged. Um, I feel like if it is missing a connector or something or it has a damage connector, I can pull that off the other 17 STI harness that I have in the back of the garage and we can just like repin and whatnot. So um, today it's a lot of what we've already done. So I'm, I'm just gonna time lapse entirely through pulling out this harness. Um, and then I wanna get a lot of the hall tech sensors that I have for the engine on the engine so that way I don't have them sitting around anymore. But let me show you what we have first. So on the engine already, we have the IAT sensor. We have a couple other smaller sensors, the injectors and whatnot. I don't really count those as sensors, but they're all on there. Over here on the table, I've been gathering a lot of hall tech sensors or HAL tech, however you wanna pronounce it. So we've got their oil temperature sensor their four bar map sensor their oil temperature sensor or no this one's oil pressure sensor their single channel can or their single channel can wideband controller with o2 sensor we have our hall tech elite 2500 i already have two of the coil packs in the car but these are the r35 gtr coil packs we have our ethanol sensor we have a switch panel for the battery we've got a lot of connectors from iwire and then i got these ones from concept z no i got these ones from uh race race spec as well these are the r35 gtr uh connectors for these coil packs so that way we can pin them all up so i want to get some of these sensors on the engine today that's my that's one of my goals to see how long like assuming this doesn't take all day which i don't think it will um and then i also got the pistons for the evo just figured i'd update you guys on that real quick so now that i have the pistons for this i can go through and measure our block down here just to verify that everything is good then go drop that off at the machine shop you also might see some like garage renovation stuff happening in the background uh matt and i have been like moving lighting around in here to try to get lighting in the garage better uh matt matt and i took down some like cabinets and shelves over there so all this stuff is getting like moved around so uh while matt's doing that let me jump in here and start tackling this wiring to get this thing knocked out oh one more thing a lot of you guys were asking where i got this light from i'll link it down below it's just like an amazon light that i use it's a hood light that i just put inside of the car so uh let's start taking all this out again so straight back to square one Honestly, at this point, Subaru should just hire me because I can remove a harness in like two hours now. I was waiting for the comment, but that's cool. Never mind. Keep put. Keep just building your cabinet back there. Saying you had a job at Subaru once. Yeah, I know. I turned it down. Give me a lube tech job. Pfft. I can pull a harness in two hours. Two hours, Matt. With my interior already taken out. Anyways. 
Um, getting past that, so let me show you guys everything that goes into the CAN bus system, um, just so you guys can fully understand like what needs to communicate with each other, because there were definitely some things that were not communicating. Well, I can foresee some things that were not communicating. So for the most part, back here I have everything CAN bus related on the table. So we have our SRS module. This is one of the ones that was not communicating. This is your BIU, your body integrated unit, your control unit, the controls, all of the stuff and the things. This is what this. Well, let me let me start off by saying this BIU. This SRS module, the ECU are all, and the push button, everything like that, I'm pretty sure is serialized to one another. Maybe not, well, the push button's not, but the BIU, the, well, the ECU, the BIU, the SRS, all of those are serialized to one another. So even if I would've got a 2016 module for that harness that we had, it wouldn't have worked. So um, it's SRS module, BIU, head unit, oddly enough, cluster, ECU and then all of these are supporting things for the B or for the uh, just the BIU the body integrated SRS CAN system uh, which is like the MFD both of the fuse panel boxes I don't think so much but I'm pretty sure the hazard button does integrate into it the steering wheel integrates into it uh, these little smaller ones one of these is for the TPMS the other one is your fuel pump controller and then back here on the rear deck lid there's that little box right back there and the little box that sits back there is what detects the access key for the car so it's not anything up in the front of the car the access key detection is actually in the rear deck lid which is weird but uh we're straight back to being stripped again out of this out of the interior there's literally nothing in here at this point except for mechanical things so now we wait for the new harness to come in if anybody does need a complete chassis harness for a 2016 sti i do have one if you need it 300 bucks shipped if you do want it um, it'll fit 2015 2016 wrx and sti so I surprisingly got the harness done a lot quicker than I was expecting. Now we're gonna jump up into the engine to get a couple of the sensors in here. Uh, I'm gonna get the oil pressure and oil temperature sensor up onto the engine. So that way we have two less sensors sitting around that can potentially be damaged. I'd rather have them in the car. So we're using Haltech for every, Haltech, Haltech for literally everything on here um, for the oil temperature sensor. That's gonna go, let me show you where I'm putting them. So just like on an EJ, I'm gonna be putting my sensors in the same spot. Oil pressure is gonna go right here. Oil temperature is gonna go right back here. Just the most accurate readings for what I've seen. I'm pretty sure the EG is gonna follow the same principles as the EJ. Um, so let's get those two other sensors installed on here. Then we can jump up to the map sensor and the wideband controller. So we got some of the sensors in. Now with our Haltech oil pressure sensor here, it is a little tall, it is close to the intake manifold, but we're doing revisions on the intake manifold, so I'm not too stressed about that. I did have to swap this plug here for the other one that I was using back there. So we have our oil temperature sensor in the back right there and we have our oil pressure sensor. Oil pressure sensor is sitting right above cylinder one. Oil temperature is sitting right above, what is it? One, two, three, four, cylinder five. So oil temp above cylinder five, oil pressure above cylinder one. I also went ahead and I got the oil feed plumbed into the back of the head right here. So this is just out of an IAG kit that I had laying around. Um, so this is kind of how the oil feed's gonna route. It's gonna come up off the turbo, go down, go under the fuel rail here, and then go back to the feedback there. So um, I wasn't really intending to do that. I just figured I'd kind of do that since I already have the stuff for it. Um, next up, I'm just gonna knock out some more smaller stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and get the boost controller sheathed up and wired here with some electrical connectors on it. For those, I'm just using some OEM iWire connect. Well, they're OEM Super ones that I got from iWire. Um, so they're just stock boost controller connectors. So let's get one of these sheathed and wired on real quick. One less thing to do. And then I, then I want to find the spot um, where I want to mount this ethanol sensor because now that I already know and I need to put the battery tray back up in the front of the car. So we're going to be doing a lot of smaller stuff, getting the engine bay kind of put back together um, of how it's going to go for final assembly. I still need to find a spot for this map sensor too. So many sensors, all the sensors. Snap, crack a pot, mine fried to a crisp, make an MC into a wide-eyed lunatic. <laughs> To 
be honest, after doing a lot of the wiring that we've done in the car, my wiring game's getting on point. Just saying, just saying. So you can't tell me this don't look OEM as all hell if I can untangle how I got this in there. You can't tell me that isn't beautiful. It's nicely sheathed. It has its weather seal connectors. Oh, it's beautiful. So the boost controller has its wiring harness put on it. I got an oil feed line on here. It's just a temporary mock-up to kind of like figure out how I need that and the length I need to buy to be able to make that feed line. I came across a random discovery over here. So this is an EJ25 coil pack. Uh, they fit rather nicely in uh, only the middle cylinders on the EG33. I was just curious, playing around with it, testing things out. Um, they fit rather nice, surprisingly. Too bad. The, the main problem as to why you can't use these is when they sit in the block like that, this is the grounding I guess the grounding stud or the grounding bolt that grounds the coil pack out because this big black piece going around the coil pack is all a grounding strap. And uh, on the EG33, the grounding bolt is actually on the opposite side of the coil pack, except on the mid middle cylinder, which is a little bit weird, but we have our GTR coil packs. So we're gonna be using on this anyways. I think I'm gonna do an external coil pack with a lead going down into the uh, spark plugs. Might just make things a little bit easier. For the map sensor, I have the map sensor like put in here now and I did it in a pretty inconspicuous location i think so i have the map sensor put up underneath of the cowl it's out of the way it frees up room we have a lot of real estate back up there so that way when i go to wire the harness it can come out through that grommet go through here and then just go straight up to our map sensor right there which works pretty well so at this point we still need to get the ethanol sensor in which i'm going to look and see if iag's mount will work for what we're doing in here because if it does it would just make life a lot easier so we have a lot of our sensors actually installed on this now oil pressure iat throttle body oil temperature, map sensor, boost controller. We actually almost have all the, all the sensors installed on here now. So as soon as we get the interior wiring figured out, we can actually start running all of our harness and start like wiring in our harness, which is gonna be nice. So I still need to find a good location for this guy right here. I just don't know where I wanna put it quite yet. Like I'm trying, trying to find some room. I don't know, I'll find somewhere in there that works out for uh, location because I have, I have to keep in consideration where fuel lines are and a lot of you guys ask what this is This is just a GM flex fuel sensor. It's the same one Cobb uses uh, I'll link this down below if anybody does want this as well as these fittings right here uh, I think this flex fuel sensor is like 40 bucks exact same one as Cobb So we need to go run to Lowe's real quick because Matt has a, uh, a whole bundle of things that he's putting together over there And I need to grab a small tote to put like extra Subaru parts in so BRB. So it's the next morning. Um, it's a little echoey in here. Matt and I are actually trying to work on getting the garage to like more of a studio style space. Uh, so we've been adding a lot more lights in here and like knocking down cabinets and trying to make the garage feel a little bit bigger. Um, so as soon as we got back from the hardware store last night, that's kind of where I cut off and kind of ended it. Uh, but for the most part, we made some solid progress. We have a lot of sensors on the car. We have that old harness out. The new harness should be here by the 23rd. I got a shipping notification this morning that it did ship out. So as soon as that new harness comes in, we can get that installed in the car and that should there's no reason in the world that shouldn't fix all of our problems so we're well on our way to getting the blue brew here to just function as a basic car again once it functions as a basic car we can get everything sorted out to get the hall tech in there and piggybacked off of that system so that way we can start wiring in the engine and now that we pretty much have all of our sensors installed on the engine with the exception of still the flex fuel sensor just because i don't know where i want to put that one quite yet I just, i'm trying to like keep in mind like consideration of fuel line routing and whatnot um, so as soon as we get the stock harness back in have it working as it should, we can just jump straight to the Haltech wiring at this point. So um, that's where I'm gonna end it on this one, you guys. So our power's been cutting out like all morning. We've just been having like these crazy storms up here recently. I don't know why, it's super windy. Um, power's been going in and out, so I'm not gonna be jumping on the STI this morning. If it like dies down this afternoon, I'm gonna jump back on it and start knocking out some of the auxiliary stuff that we have sitting down there under the table. So if you guys like the video, if you guys are excited for the STI to live again, go ahead and hit that like button. We're not quitting, we're not giving up. We're gonna keep pushing through. We're gonna get this thing sorted we're gonna get it working again so with that if you guys are not subscribed to the channel and you want to be i'm not going to tell you to do it you know what to do if you want to but with that i will catch you guys in the next one peace out homies Woo! it's so echoey in here